Cheeky. Hello, Cheeky. Hello. Hello. Hey, oh, chicken. Hello, funny microphone. Hello, clever. Hello, everyone, and welcome to an evening with me. After my dance, I shall do some paper tearing, some satirical impersonations, whistle Handel's Messiah, and beg for a biscuit. Excuse me, madam, what are you doing? Well, this is my show, you see, and... Excuse me, you're Monty Python, aren't you? No. <laughs> Neither am I. Do you think there's going to be a national shortage? I, I don't know how to put this, Miss... Uh, Miss... MacDonald. You're welcome. No, it's... It's just that you're interrupting a recording of my show. What? Oh, uh, our show. Tim, the only people in this show are John, you and me. What are you doing here with Miss... MacDonald. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, what are you doing here, madam? Well, I was told I could star in my own show tonight. Who by? By my very good friend, uh, that man over there. John. John. Ah, uh, excuse me a moment. I'm uh, just nipping off to grow a beard. John, not so fast. Oh, sorry. I'm just nipping off. <laughs> oh, no. My dear Miss MacDonald. You're welcome. <laughs> like to go and lie down on the Dennis King trio for a moment and we'll sort this out. I, I, I can explain everything. Yeah. Honestly, I, 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 I can explain everything. Everything. I shall start with Archimedes' principle, the volume of a body <laughs> in earth and water. Is he Shut up. Could you explain the presence of this young lady? Ah. Uh, that young lady? No, that's Dennis. Oh. <laughs> this young lady? Oh, yes. Ah, well, uh, I found her on my doorstep wrapped in a Rolls Royce with uh, a note pinned to her left... Well, there's no need to go into that. And the note said... Good evening. I am a note. <laughs> I was pinned to her left... Well, there's no need to go into that. <laughs> this child of the storm is called Amy MacDonald. You're welcome. I do all the voices in this bit. Oh, and, uh... <laughs> anyway, I, I took her in and... Uh... Excuse me. Uh, could I get on with my paper tearing? Please yourself. Uh, thank you, maestro. What is all this about? Well, you see, I became enamoured of her talent, her star potential... And her left. There's no need to go into that. <laughs> what is she doing on the show? Well, you see, I have always thought that what this show really lacked was a glamorous blonde. Oh, that's nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> Really, Tim, nothing personal. I just meant a girl, not a puff. Oh, well, that's all right, then. <laughs> Give her a chance, lads, otherwise she'll cry a lot and hit me with the heel of her shoe. Thank you, everyone. That concludes my paper tearing. But you haven't made anything. I didn't say I was going to make anything, darling. I just said I was going to tear some paper. <laughs> John, are you sure this is a good idea? I was going to stand on my head, but my legs aren't long enough. <laughs> no, I'm not sure this is a good idea. <laughs> Look, lads, just let her do a few odd lines and keep her happy. Now, let's just get on with the show, can't we? All right. Read this, Miss MacDonald. Meanwhile, in a lonely parsonage in Yorkshire, just next to the pudding... <laughs> Bramwell... Have you finished your painting because Charlotte and Emily and I have finished our novels? Well done, Anne. I tell you, one day the whole world will know the name Ramsbottom. <laughs> I thought that was going to be a joke about the Brontes. Tim, education's ruined you, hasn't it? <laughs> no. Well, something has. <laughs> Amy, what are you doing now, love? This is my conjuring bit where I produce the doves. <laughs> Couldn't you save it till later? Well, not really. I have to get them out soon because they're beginning to tickle. <laughs> Wow.
Would you believe it? The Geiger counter was invented by a man whose house was overrun by Geigers and wanted to count them. <laughs> and the Rev counter was invented by the Bishop of Southwark. <laughs> On the other hand, the frozen foods counter has collapsed and we're all knee-deep in yoghurt. And while we're on the subject of yoghurt, a little recitation. It was only a raspberry yoghurt. Get off. Please yourself. Want a hand with the doves, Amy? Don't you touch your left... Well, there's no need to go in. <laughs> oh, I must do something about this wind. <laughs> Scenes, Tucson, Arizona, the time, the turn of the century, the place, the last chance saloon. This is a very long introduction. Seated at the bar, and it's dull as well. Seated at the bar is the lovely Miss Lulu Bell. Oh dear, I wish they'd bring back the fat stock prices. Hi, stranger. Like to buy a girl a drink? Sure, ma'am. What you having? A hard time keeping this voice up. <laughs> Know where I can find the marshal? Yeah, he's over there with a star pinned to his left. Well, there's no need to go in about <laughs> Here, you the marshal? Yep. Remember me, marshal? Ain't you the centipod kid, fastest man in the West? <laughs> yep. Some call me combine harvester. <laughs> Why? It's the hot water that kills them. What? I'm just a gunman. I'm no good at jokes. <laughs> ah! Ah! I came to warn you that Black Jake's on his way to town and he's gunning for you. He didn't even die funny. <laughs> I ain't finished yet. <laughs> Call my dog Handy Man because he keeps doing odd jobs around the house. Oh! <laughs> Marshal! Marshal! He's here! Who? What? Who? Who what? Who's here? Where? Doesn't matter, he's gone now. <laughs> Just as well, Black Jake's arrived. This is a show-up, darling, hands down. <laughs> no, Amy. I am Black Jake. Come to get you for what you've done to my wife, darling. <laughs> Marshal, he's gonna kill you. Jake, before you pull that trigger... First of all, answer me one question. Who played in golf for Sunderland in the 1973 Cup Final? Montgomery, darling. Nobody loves a smart ass. <laughs> Are you hurt bad, Jake? Yep. Got me right through the left, but let's not go into that now. <laughs> uh, dies. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Well, Lulu Bell, it's, uh... As I'm dead now, darlings, is it all right if I go over there and practice my juggling bit? Uh, Amy, uh, Miss MacDonald... You're welcome. How, how, are we, how are we going to win the Jimmy Tarbuck Award for Sophisticated Comedy if you keep interrupting the sketch? <laughs> I'm sorry, but John and Mr. Junkin... Bless you. ...said this was going to further my career. But all I've done so far is half a meanwhile and a naughty man and that cowboy thing. You should talk, Mush. I haven't been on for three pages and I'm regular. <laughs> the blues are so trite, yet exquisitely right for the way that I currently feel. They're just a cliché, outré and passé. And yet quintessentially real Not original Utterly banal And yet real So won't you Lean on me mama Give me jelly roll Rob me baby Rob me really satisfy my soul Give me all your loving Make me all not true Give it to me mama Make me know I'm loving Make me lose my low down blues mm, tonight. The blues are not new, they are pure deja vu. But they say what I'm wanting to say. Their pedestrian lilt. 
can get right up my kilt And I hardly the peak of soigné Faded and a bore, jaded to the core And yet I so won't you Lay it on me, mama, give me jelly roll Rock me, baby, rock me, really satisfy my soul Give me all your lovin', make me all my food Give it to me, mama, make me know I'm lovin' you Make me lose my low-down blues, baby, tonight I've got the blues, but I'll blue From my head to the tip of my shoes Oh, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Silence in court, silence in court The case of hernia versus foul pest Mr. Justice Fireplace presiding. Take it away, my lad. What's this silly case all about? My lad, this case is a difficult one to raise. Why, darling? It's got no handle. <laughs> my lad, the action arises from a dispute in a corn chandler's at Kensal Rise, owned by my client, Mr. Cuddles Hernia. Objection, my lad. Objection overruled. Thank God, I couldn't think of anything to say. <laughs> Proceed, Mr. Zimbalist. Senior. Senior. You're welcome. <laughs> Malad, on the night of the 12th of April, or if you prefer, the 28th of July, Mr. Foulpest entered the aforementioned corn chandler's somewhat inebriated. Objection, Malad. What is it, Shorty? <laughs> Malad, I cannot stand here and listen to all this. Why not? I've got a tranny in my wig and Jimmy Young's on. Oh, turn it up. <laughs> turn it up, I like it. And so it's off we jolly well go with today's recipe, you see. It's for Brussels sprout flambe from Mrs. Winch of No Fixed Abode because her house has burned down. <laughs> My lad, this cannot go on. People have been saying that for years, but he still gets away with it. Silence, Mr. Lollabridgida, or I shall order you to be taken from this court and hanged by the waist until you feel poorly. Mamma mia! <laughs> court will adjourn for a home hints for the handyman. Home hints for the handyman. Give me a number, give me a number. Nine! Correct, sir. Number three it is. <laughs> How to cook a dinner for eight. Bung it in the oven about half past five. <laughs> Maestro. Pick, chummy, upon your knee. Tea for two and two for tea. For any of you at home who can't see me, I am now singing tea for two while tap dancing on roller skates. Nobody near us to hear us or see us. Hello? Hello, uh, the archers here. Uh, <laughs> you know. Dun, 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 uh, you know, all that rubbish. We're, uh, we're in the studio next door and a girl shot through here on, on roller skates screaming, and a boy for me, and we tried to write her into the script. Um, but she went too fast. If you turn the radio on, you'll be just in time to hear her. <laughs> Morning, Dan. Morning, Doris. And a boy for me. <laughs> my lad? My, has anybody seen my lad? Sorry, the roller skates ran away with me. <laughs> Can we get on now, Amy? You're welcome. McDonald. <laughs> When you're ready, dear. Oh. I am Black Jake. Come to get it's you It's the court Boston. case, dear. <laughs> My lad, I should like to call a surprise witness. Who is it? I don't know. It's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, where is the surprise witness? Boo! Oh! <laughs> oh! Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Are you the surprise witness? No. 
I am a well-known public figure and would like to be referred to as Mr. X. And this is my wife, Mrs. Gridley. <laughs> it's time to interrupt this court case for a news flash. Oh. The post office today announced a new scale of postal charges. For 5p, your letter will go second-class mail. For 10p, it will go first-class mail. For a pound, you may even get it delivered. <laughs> but they're not promising where. Later, a post office spokesman added, Oh, we've got a bloody nerve. <laughs> Order in court! Order in court! Do you mind? That's my part, Miss... Uh, MacDonald. Uh, you're welcome. I always do that bit. My orders in court are well known. Your orders in the pub aren't too clever. <laughs> Speaking of pubs, I've got a cousin in Scotland with three legs. How do you mean? I got a letter from my auntie the other day. She said we wouldn't recognise George now. He's grown another foot. <laughs> We present the Sinner of Sidi Bel Abyss, an outspoken story of life in the French Foreign Legion. God, it's hell out here in the desert. I joined the Legion to forget Barbara... what's her name? <laughs> and now I'm stuck here with the heat and the sand in my flies. Sand and a fly. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I am constantly persecuted by the sadistic Sergeant Lebrun, and I haven't seen a woman in months. Hello, naughty man. <laughs> I am Salima. I work at the camp. You certainly do, don't you? <laughs> Come and relax. Rest your head against my bosom. <laughs> you flat with debt, English dog. The beautiful Selima belongs to me, the sadistic Sergeant Lebrun. I will whip you within an inch of your... Hangabout? <laughs> within an inch of your hangabout. No. <laughs> hey, the sketch isn't going right. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Here he goes again. Been so big time since he got his diploma from the Nicholas Parsons School of Acting. Look, <laughs> look, as we've got Amy in the show, why am I still playing all the girls' parts? How do you think I feel playing the part of a sadistic sergeant? I mean, tap dancing on roller skates is one thing, but whipping someone within an inch of their hangabout is another. I'm a chap full of snap and personality. I had pals, lots of gals, but one thing worried me. Banging at my brain just like a drum. A girl who rang the bell in life in every way. I love sports, tennis courts, until that fateful day. Life may be a laugh, but it's no joke. I realized one needs a special bloke. You and me, sugar and tea, bread and butter and bird and bee. What a perfect combination. Me and you, cow and moo, beer and skittles and bill and go. What a perfect combination. On that special day we finally found us. And cast off the chains that cruelly bound us. Found our freedom. Are you and me dumb? We're so fine, we're so rare, we're so lovely. Isn't there what a perfect combin? Love just dropped a bomb in. What a perfect combination. Milad, Milad, may I crave the indulgence of the court? What is it, Mr. Liversedge? A little poem I've composed, Your Honour, which goes as follows. <clears throat> as I sat neath the trees by the river and rested at ease on my pillows, I ate up a pound of radishes 
and soon I had wind in the willows. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now for a live outside broadcast from the north of England where Lady De Vere Foot Pump is <laughs> opening the new section of the M1. Ladies and gentlemen, I have great pleasure in declaring this new section of the motorway open. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we present a drama of the Deep South. Rotting Dean? Not quite. <laughs> Louisiana. Wasn't far out. Shut up. <laughs> a story of the passions and hates that lurk beneath the surface of a small southern town. A trolley bus called Arthur. <laughs> Our tribute to Tennessee Ernie Williams. Am I in it? Right in it, dear. You play Miss Magnolia and do the next announcement. The cast is as follows. Big Dan Dingle, local maggot and typhoon. <laughs> Magnet and typhoon. Played by Fatty Cryer. Miss Magnolia, his headstrong daughter, by none other than myself, Miss Amy... I can't read this bit. It's your name. Miss Amy, your name. You're welcome. <laughs> Mr. Timbrook Taylor will play the part of Gaylord Plank. <laughs> Very badly. <laughs> Drifting Willie, the mysterious stranger, is played by Mr. John Junkin, who's a bit too old for the part, but you can't see on the wireless. <laughs> Policeman and the piano are played by Dennis King, who is eminently desirable. Give us a kiss, darling! <laughs> Trouble is, we never know which one of us he's talking to. <laughs> the play starts in the breakfast room at Dingle Mansion. Morning, Daddy. Morning, Magnolia. How are you getting on with Gaylord? He brought me home from the ball last night, and I'm furious with him. Why? What did he do? Nothing. That's why I'm furious with him. Listen, I know you don't want to marry him, but his pappy owns the only stretch of Dingleville that ain't mine. And anyway, if you don't marry him, there ain't no plot. But, Daddy, <laughs> Gaylord ain't a real man. I know, but it's the best Tim can do. <laughs> Never marry Gaylord, Daddy. I'd rather die. Die? What do you want to marry that dumb Welshman for? <laughs> Don't look down on him just because he's an immigrant. He ain't even that. He's only here because he started tunneling in Merthyr Tidville and lost his way. <laughs> hey. Hello? Hello, I'm a Welshman, and I'd like to complain about the implication that Welshmen are stupid. Well, we're, we're doing a little sketch at the moment, so I'll call you back. Uh, where are you? I don't know. I got lost on my way to the phone box. <laughs> Magnolia fled, sobbing, to her favourite secret place by the river. It was a beautiful day. The warblers were warbling, the boll weevils were bowling, and the chitterlings were making a terrible run. <laughs> Suddenly, someone burst through the undergrowth. Howdy, ma'am. Was that you that just exploded? Yep, that's me all over. <laughs> the, stra the stranger was a tall, suntan man with a guitar slung over his shoulder, a mouth organ in his pocket, and a fiddle case under his arm. He was whittling a reed pipe and humming the while. <laughs> Are you? I'm a rambler, ma'am, known as Drifting Willie, and I'd now like to recite for you Albert and the Lion. What's that got to do with the plot? Nothing. I told you I was a rambler, ma'am. <laughs> I've been on the road a long time, and I want your body. It would look a bit silly with your head on it. <laughs> Come here. Oh, 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 oh. Just 
Master Cotton oh, Picking. Uh, hang on a minute, Tim. I was just beginning to enjoy it. Oh, sorry. Ooh, ah, mm, ooh, ah, ooh, 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 ooh. Right. <laughs> just a cotton picking. I can't get out of the habit of playing crumpet. Sorry. <laughs> just a cotton picking minute. Tim, I've never heard you sound butch before. Haven't you? Pathetic, isn't it? How <laughs> dare you, sir? Take your grimy hands off this flower of the South. I was just helping her up. No need. She's a self-raising flower. Yeah! <laughs> Get your dukes up, dude. I'm going to take you a poet with my bare hands. Uh, 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 just a uh, cotton picking. Hang on a minute, Amy. I was just beginning to enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 now, oh, just looky here. Daddy, what are you doing here? Overacting. <laughs> Whatever everyone else was enjoying, I want to try some. Ooh, ah. Ooh, ah. Not as much fun on your own, is it? Pardon? Enough of this fight. <laughs> I'm going to settle $200,000 on you, and you're going to marry Gaylord. I accept your offer. <laughs> but what about me? Sorry, ma'am, my rambling days are over. I'm engaged. <laughs> and so they were married. It was a white wedding, but then what would you expect in the Deep South? The last we heard of Big Dan, he was still trying to get his Orson Welles voice right. You, you a dirty rat? Yes, I. Play it again, Sam. Play it again. I think I've got it's it. Too late. Oh, too damn. late. Miss Magnolia is now appearing in a working man's club in the Vatican, where every night you can hear her say... And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for my finale bit. So it's good night from me, Amy MacDonald. You're, You're welcome. welcome. And thank you, Maestro. The programme was written and performed by Tim Brooke Taylor, Barry Cryer and John Junkin. Our special guest was Amy MacDonald. The music was played by the Dennis King Trio. And the programme was produced... by David 